very today. I've noticed that it has been raining outside and kind of dreary, druggy, however you want to look at it. But I want to thank the Lord. And I'm praying that it will continue to rain in here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Looking forward to what God is going to continue to do. One thing we must do is trust him with our whole heart. Lean not to our own understanding. In all of our ways, acknowledge him. And as the word of God says, he will direct our paths. I thank God for what he's been doing. And we're going to worship him. We're going to, I, I know once again, as we deal with the atmosphere and a lot of people are out with sniffles. Uh, Brother David going to um, Alabama and there's just a mixture of everything going on. I still do know that Jesus is still on the, on the throne. He's at the right hand of the Father. And he's praying for us. And I want to do exactly that. We're going to open up in prayer. We're going to sing a few songs. Good to see you, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's. Let's pray. Dear Father, once again, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for bringing us here together. Lord, we're absolutely nothing without you. And Lord, when you said two or more gathered together in your name, you are in the midst. And I thank you for that, God. Lord, I'm asking you to continue to bless, to help, to lead, to guide, Father, and help us to know exactly where we need to be in you. Father, I'm asking you to take this worship. And Father, as we learn of you, as we open up the living word of God, that you would touch our hearts and strengthen us, Father. Help us to endure. Help us to continue to fight the good fight of faith, dear Lord. And we'll continue to trust you. We love you. We praise you. And we thank you once again. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we do pray. And the church says amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, this is it. We're going to sing and preach. Have a good time. So let's stand up and let's grab a few. Uh, let's grab that yellow book. And I'm going to use this mic over here. Can I use this mic, Trey? Right. Mm -hmm. I'll use this one. Yeah. Okay. Page 128. I will leave it all behind. Okay. You ready? Okay. Page 128. <laughs> On earth I walk through storms and trouble, a heavy load, a worried mind. The cares of mine will burst like bubbles. One morning I will leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Some happy day on wings of love. Storms and trouble. Heavy, heavy load. 
Page 202, Heaven's Jubilee. You ready? Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing. Shall rise, oh what glory! 
trying to steal his truck and uh, he went out there to stop him and uh, evidently got hit by the vehicle, hit the ground pretty hard and uh, has some brain issues right now, some brain bleeding and desperately needs God to intervene. Um, I know God is able and we're going to trust God to intervene in such a way where a miracle will take place and I pray that as we come together and trust him in that capacity that there will be no shadow of a doubt that it is God who's came in and, and moved in that family's life. Also remember her niece, Amber, and uh, they have five kids, five kids, and a hardworking family just desperately needs God to come in and, and help them. Also want you to remember the Aguilar family uh, recently uh, lost their son, uh, had a funeral yesterday, and they just need help over there. Remember the Maripin family. Um, uh, Daniel, he lost his son. He was he was older, he believe, he's in his fifties, but still a uh, hard time right now. So all the way around, it's a uh, very dark and gloomy as far as what's been happening. But I do know that there is a light. Praise be to God, and just understanding who Jesus is, but also what is to come. So let's be remembering them families as well. You guys have any prayer requests over here? Well, go ahead. Remember Sister Gina as well. She's still under the weather. Uh, Sister Judy uh, under the weather. Praying for uh, traveling mercies for uh, Brother David uh, McGee and Sister Judy. They're going to be heading up to Alabama tomorrow. A long weekend, so they're going to get on out of here. Um, also, let's remember uh, the Ballard family as well. And uh, little Jay um, still dealing with that sickness. Had to take him to the hospital. Um, a couple days ago, was having trouble breathing. Uh, put a, a breathing treatment on him and sent the baby home. And uh, he's been, he's been uh, breathing better, still coughing up a bunch of stuff, you know. No COVID, though. It's just another sickness running around. So, the, yeah, I had pneumonia in one lung. So it's serious, you know, all the way through. And uh, But with that being said, I do know the healer. Amen. And we have a church that's coming together. Many churches around this uh, great nation of ours. Um, are coming together. It's interesting, I believe, uh, there was reported of, um, oh, Lord, I want to get the number wrong. But out of all the churches that are, you know, reported churches throughout America, it's believed that only a quarter of them truly believe the full doctrine of the Bible. I say, what do you mean, Pastor? Only a quarter of those churches truly believe from Genesis all the way to Revelation and, and it is the fulfilled word of God and everything they abide by. And what I'm saying is, as far as dealing with uh, the virgin birth, which is biblical, we believe that Jesus Christ um, uh, was crucified, was buried, and rose on the third day, biblical, all the way through. Believe that he's going to come back. Can I get an amen? amen. 
and just you know a, 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 a faith that once we leave this body as the Bible says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord and those foundational the repentance comes to salvation a man must be born again to enter heaven and all those factors only a quarter of the churches that we see out there we actually believe that but also I do read in here where the Bible says by his stripes we are healed I believe that when Jesus was on the cross and he says it is finished, that means paid in full. Praise be to God. I don't have to work my way into heaven. Can I get an amen? amen? But I can trust God all the way through. I don't have to twist his arm for a healing. It's already been bought by the blood. And that's faith risen up. And the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him. What that means is without faith it is impossible to remain in his will. And I am choosing to remain in his will. And I believe that as we pray and we trust God, we're able to touch the very hem of his garment and healing will take place for these families. How many of you believe that right now? I do. All the way. We need. Let's stand up. We're going to take these requests unto the Lord. Let's just ask God to have his way, will you? Dear Father, here we are once again. And I know, Father, without a shadow of a doubt that we are nothing without you. And my Lord, you know the needs, God, that are needing to be met here right now. Father, we do lift Tony up to you, God. You know what's going on with his brain, Father, with, with that injury. And we're asking you, Father, to, to bring a miracle in his life. We're asking you, my Lord, just to heal his body completely. And Lord, we'll be able to know that it's you, Father. There's no other way. It must be you that does it. We're asking you, Father, to do the same for those that are sick, God, with these sicknesses, Lord. And, and, and asking you, God, just to allow all this to, to pass and strength to come through. Touch Sister Judy. Touch little Jay and the Ballard family, God. Help them all the way through. Lord, I'm asking you to continue to help the families that are represented here today. My Lord, the, the babies, dear God, the husbands that, that need help, Lord, we're asking you, Father, to reunite, my Lord, those that are separated and just allow your love and grace and mercy, Lord, to be poured upon us. And Father, we're asking you once again to be able to experience that, Father, to see the ramifications of faith. And allow everything to be as it is needs to be, Father, as we trust you and know that you're able. My Lord, we're absolutely nothing without you. And I'm asking you, my God, to have your way here this evening. Touch your people. And my Lord, we're asking you to continue, Father. We're asking you, Lord, to continue to give us strength. Help us to hear your voice. Touch the nation, dear God. You know the turmoil that's going on there. Lord, we're asking you for stability direction and guidance and help the church be the church father we love you we praise you and we thank you in jesus name we pray and the church says amen. amen amen praise the lord i want to go ahead and take up an offering justice isaiah come on up here son i give uh everybody an opportunity to give and i, I thank god for what he's been doing so far we were able to raise over 800 dollars for the church van hallelujah and uh, that is one step closer to uh, being able to get out there and continue with the van ministry. Oh, by faith, son, put it down. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead. Brother Trey, stand up and pray over this offering, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for this time of fellowship. We praise you and thank you for this time of worship. Pray, Lord, that you would bless this offering. Lord, let it... Those that have to give and those that do not, Lord, bless them equally. I praise you and I thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joys and ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. I can hear you. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies. And oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. When with all the heavenly hosts we begin to sing. 
Singing the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions here will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ to ages long, heaven's jubilee. Sing it, church. Oh, what singing. Oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. One more time. Oh, what singing. Oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Thank you, Sister Bridget. Amen. Well, I want to thank the Lord for being faithful in life, in my life. And I know there's times where I haven't been, but God has come through. And I thank the Lord for protecting my children like he has and just allowing them to know that there's something more than themselves. And that something is a somebody, and his name is Jesus. And I thank God for that because I know that if, if it wasn't for the Lord, this man wouldn't be standing here talking to you. If it wasn't for the Lord, I don't believe the majority of us would be here. Isn't that right? We, we would be lost and undone. But God came in once again and had his way. And I thank him for that. Um, we, were, we were going through the answers in Genesis, and I, and I enjoyed the, uh, the lesson there. And it seemed like that um, towards the beginning of the year, the Lord started staring my heart in a different direction, even as far as the curriculum goes on. And, and I, I believe right now I just want to be sensitive, and I, I don't want to be locked into a, a certain study until the Lord releases me to uh, get back to that or find something a little bit more um, uh, just uh, not so much uh, engaging, but something that I, I want God to have the full liberty and, and freedom, but also a, a curriculum, a word that, that God will use to bless and also bring others back in. Praise the Lord. So turn with me, if you will. We're going to get to, um, we're going to go to the Old Testament is what we're going to do. I want you to turn with me to Zechariah chapter number three. Zechariah chapter number three. And we're going to start right there in verse number eight. Zechariah three and verse number eight. Um, you can remain seated. Now this this word here. Um, over the past week, there's a couple messages that I, I taught on Facebook, and uh, they're, they're a timely message. Um, I was able to get some feedback from it, and it's dealing with the, the, the branch, and it's dealing with the stone. And in that word, uh, the this, this stability that comes from God prophecies. And Lord have mercy. Through God's prophecies and through God's promises about the Messiah is is it's beautiful because it, it just strengthens and also brings about a faith to, to us today. And what I'm saying is throughout this word, you're going to see all the way from Genesis to Zechariah, there is a reflection of who Christ is and what he was intended to do. And this is why I'm here. This is why we're here, to be able to experience uh, a, a revelation that sits deep into the heart, but especially that takes root and is able to keep us in this very day and hour. Um, I want to tell you, if it was the devil's will, if the devil had full reign over our life, we wouldn't be here right now. Some of us would be in prison. Some of us would be dead. Some of us would definitely not be in this sanctuary uh, somewhere in another house. You know, God knows what, but the Lord intervened in our life. 
And intervening in our life, he, he brings in this word that it never comes back void. It never comes back empty. It never comes back with no effect. It works things out. And as we understand as it works things out, the Bible also tells us that we need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean by working out your own salvation with fear and trembling? There is going to come a day where you are tested and tried, where you're going to have to be able to stand. And in that standing, whatever you receive throughout your, your time of that trial, of you standing is going to be what you need right then and there, once again, to be successful, to get the victory, but also to help others along. And... I'll give you a perfect example. Yesterday, the, the, I had to preach that, uh, the preach the, the funeral for that young man. And it was, it was very difficult. It was, uh, it was so difficult that I've, had a, I've never felt that way because I felt inadequate to come and preach this funeral to this man or to his family. And what bothered me was, was just a year before I preached his brother's funeral. So to stand in front of this family a year later and let them know that Jesus Christ is still the way, the truth, and the life was very difficult. During his brother's funeral, and it was sadly to say, from what I understand, his brother did die of a drug overdose. But during his brother's funeral, there was eight people that came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. A year later, I seen the same people, the eyes, and, and the family that was there. And, and then there we are, burying another one of their loved ones. And to know that God placed us there, I'm telling you, it was, it was I didn't want to be there. But know that it was divinely inspired for somebody to stand there and let this family know that there is comfort beyond death. That there is hope beyond what they see. And also, there is God's mercy and grace to remind some of them, y'all need to get back with Jesus. And that was the, the, the whole service was exactly that. I, I, I said for 15 minutes things that I had in my notes as I, as I preached the funeral. I, I didn't have anything written down. And the words that were coming out of my mouth at that time were not of me. They were of the Spirit of God. I didn't know what to say. I walked in in a situation that I've never been in, for, in, in before. And really, how do you prepare for that? You don't by, you know, just go into a certain manual and say, okay, this is what you say, this is what you don't say. No, it is a total surrender. And I believe that the Lord wanted me to come in exactly like that to where I couldn't get anything in the way, but I'd be able to tell those people exactly what they needed to hear. Have you ever been in that situation where you, you, you get some things worked up and you know exactly what you're, you think you know what you're going to say and you get it all worked up in the mind and then you get over there, then all of a sudden, especially if you're walking with the Lord, uh, he, he holds you back and you don't say nothing that you wanted to say. <laughs> Sometimes praise the Lord for that. Because there's some things I wanted to say. It was like, whoa. It was real. But God said, no. I don't want you to say that. There's times where he says, don't say anything at all. And this scripture, this word, as we deal with Zechariah, it brings Christ to light. But not in such a way where everybody can honestly say, okay, this is the Messiah. This is how it was going to be. No, this scripture, the way it was written, was meant to be illuminated by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God. Because we have a witness that as the Spirit of God was writing the Old Testament, and when the Spirit of God was given to the church, when the church is able to read the Old Testament, they see the revelation of Jesus Christ through the whole Bible. And this is the, the truth of the matter is we know that God in, in all of our life, in each hour, each moment, 
And especially, and the reason why I say especially, because you truly start to live once you are born again. But every moment of your life is predestined to fulfill the perfect will of God. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Every moment of your life, whether good or bad, especially under the obedience of, of following the perfect will of God, is meant to place you there to where you can fulfill his perfect will. And basically what pastor's trying to tell you is you can't lose. Even if you feel defeated. You can't lose even if you feel inadequate. If, if you are humbled and say there's no way I can do this. But then God steps in and says yeah you cannot do it in your way. But you can do it in my way. And then that is being the vessel that he has called us to be. That is being the willing vessel that he's called us to be. And in that willingness, there is a fulfillment of God's plan for your life. Jesus fulfilled his perfect will. And because of that, we can too. So I want to read three verses to you, 8, 9, and 10 out of Zechariah chapter 3. And then we're going to go to Psalm 18. <coughs> if you're there, say amen. amen. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Everybody say the stone. That I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Isn't it amazing how life can change in a moment in the twinkling of an eye? Isn't it amazing how things can just instantly go from... From good to bad. But what I love to see here, Sister Kelly, is when things go from bad to good. And there's times when we must remember what God has brought us through because he's going to bring us through it again. But when we see God just totally change the situation in one moment, it is time to go ahead and lift our hands and praise his holy name right then and there. And it says in, in this verse number 10, in that day, look at your neighbor and say, in that day. that day. What does it say in your Bible? What does it say? Verse 10. What's the first three words? In that day. <clears throat> on that day. So as we deal with a, a type of position in, on, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor, neighbor, under the vine and under the fig tree. I am looking forward to getting to verse 10. But I want to preach to you dealing with the stone. I've already spoke a little bit on the branch a few weeks ago. And I want to get jump right into the stone. In verse 9, go back with me to verse number 9. And it deals with, for behold, the stone. That the is a definite article. That means there is the stone. That I have laid before Joshua upon one stone. Notice he says one stone shall be seven eyes. That eyes is dealing with the, the providence of God. The perfect providence of God. Seven being that perfect number. He says, behold, I will engrave the engraving there of, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. You must understand that this stone, the stone, is the only stone. It is a building stone. In the root meaning of this, it deals with the rebuilding. Look at your neighbor and say rebuilding. Rebuilding and establishing. It means also to cause to continue. To continue, but also to begin. Praise be to God. You know, we deal with coming into the new year and, and people were just, oh, we're so glad to get out of 2020. And and, they, and we come into 2021 and we're like, yeah, things are going to be great. You know, we're getting out of here. And boy, it's already starting to get goofy. 
And the reason why that is is the same people that were in 2020 come on over to 2021. They didn't stay behind. You had a year change, but the people kept coming over. And the attitudes and the agendas were still there. But when God gets on the uh, in the picture, and what I mean when he gets on the throne of your heart, there's an establishment of a, a, a beginning. And he begins to build. It was interesting. I was We were driving down the road today, and, and uh, Sister Bridget and I, we had Justice in the back seat. And Justice is 10 years old. And he's the only boy in the house right now, besides my dog, my little poodle, Zach. <laughs> and Sky. And Sky, my cat, yeah. But we think about it, and when Bridget and I, we, you know, we first got together, we're like, wow. It's, it's like we're starting over here. We're one young man, and, and we're growing in life. It's like we're just starting over. She says, I don't see it that way. And I, was, and, and I said it just, you know, jokingly, and I was like, well, it looks like that we only have the one kid. Now we need to have four more again to bring it back up to five. Uh, <laughs> Needless to say, she said no. <laughs> she says, I'm not doing that at all. But regardless, when you look at life and when you one chapter is, is over with and done with, and there's been some chapters I wish I could have skipped, but have you noticed you, you're glad that you didn't skip them because it really helped you in the next chapter in life? There's some chapters I wish I could just skip over and get to the end and see how it's going to work out and how things are going to just balance out and match up as they need to. But then I'm glad that we don't have that ability to pass over the chapters of our life. But one thing we can do through the promise of God is go to the back of this book and find out once again, praise be to God, we get the victory all the way through. We win. Can you say amen? amen. There's a time where time will be no more and we will be able to walk on streets of gold and walls of jasper. My greatest desire is that my family comes with us. Everybody is there. My greatest desire is everybody I've ever preached and brought this word to Someday we'll make a decision to follow Christ. That's my heart's desire. To know that everybody that I've ever come in contact with and honestly brought in this word, their name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the beginning to build and build a ministry, build a life, build a beginning. Praise be to God. I want you to turn with me to Psalm 118. As we get into Psalm 118, you're going to see the psalmist is basically writing a, a chapter of life. And as he's writing a chapter of life, we're going to see some prophetic verses come out of this. But once again, it is always pointing towards Jesus Christ the righteous. Before I forget, your homework is 1 Peter chapter number 2, 1 through 25. 1 Peter chapter number 2, 1 through 25. We will be getting into that next Wednesday, Lord willing. And the Bible says, as we're dealing with the stone in Psalm 18, verse 19, open to me the gates of righteousness. Notice that there is a righteous entrance that I will, look at your neighbor and say, I will. Go into them. Now, if you notice, you need to write that down because that I will is so important. Because it deals with the very heart's content, but also the very drive that we have our will to enter into that gate. You must understand that God doesn't say who's going to go to heaven and who's going to hell. Through his, his perfect plan of salvation, he gives us a choice. To accept his love and mercy or to reject it. And I wish I could give you all the answers of why do people reject it and, and why is there such a rebellious a rebelliousness that comes through. And I wish I could say, you know, that this is the reason why, but no, I don't have all those answers. 
I just know that there are those who do reject this gospel and they reject it enough to where their hearts become hardened and then when the invitation to come into the gates of righteousness are given to them, they refuse. But as I see here, we have a group of people who have a desire to go into the gates of righteousness to enter in. I will go into them and while we are there, we're going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And in that praising the Lord, once again, this gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter, we will, and we must enter because there's only one way and one gate. And this gate that he is bringing us to is once again going to bring us to the stone who is Christ. But the way and the only one way, the entrance is through Christ. There is no other way. That's why Christianity is so persecuted and at times so confusing because the enemy don't mind if you get wrapped up in Buddhism. He don't mind that. He don't mind if you get wrapped up in some odd religion and, and just let you kind of flow through it. The, the thing of it is he knows if you find this truth here in the word and you apply your life, but most of all you give your life unto him then he starts getting nervous. Then he starts trembling in his own hooves when somebody says, today I am going to enter the gate of righteousness. Today I am going to walk through and I'm going to praise God. Praise be to God. This morning and this evening. Boy, the devil does not want to hear that come out of your mouth. And sometimes it's a fight to get out of your bed. Let alone say, today I'm opening up this gate and going to praise God through it. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's like, Lord have mercy. Why hasn't the trumpet sounded? Mm -hmm. And the reason why that is is because it's not God's timing. Because there's so many people that are on that edge of accepting this great salvation. And God is so long-suffering. Aren't you glad he's long-suffering? Aren't you glad that when we have fallen short and we go against the will of God? I'm just going to go ahead and say it. When we sin, and you say, Pastor, what do you mean when we sin? No, the Bible says that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. There's times where we go against his will, and I'm so glad. And what I mean is there's times where the Lord says, I want you right now just to stop everything and go read your Bible. And on a spiritual level, we're like, no, i got to finish doing this one. Or well, I want you to go ahead and, and fulfill my will. And you know the calling that I have for you. But you say, Lord, no, I'm just not going to do it. i got too many things I want to do. And in that, God is so long-suffering. Because the very first time we've ever fell, he didn't kill us with a lightning bolt. Aren't you glad he didn't do that? Aren't you glad right then and there? You're like, oh, Lord. What's that? <laughs> he took us out. I'm so glad he didn't do that. I know many moons ago, I think I've told you this story, but it fits perfectly right here. When I was first saved, and I met this man, this man kept aggravating me. He was moving my stuff around, and, and I went up there to him. I talked to him, and I said, man, I want you to stop moving my stuff around. He says, man, this is, this is my part of the room. I'm going to move it if I want to move it. He grabbed my box one more time, and as soon as he stuck his head down, I kneed him right in the jaw. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Turn the other cheek, buddy. <laughs> and sitting there, and right when it happened, all of a sudden, boom, and I realized, Lord, have mercy, I messed up. He sat back and said, Lord, have mercy, what just happened? But anger got the better of me. Old flesh got the better of me. And I gave him the right knee of fellowship. <laughs> And I'm telling you that because right then and there, it could have been it. The Lord could have said, no, you're done, man. I've done forgave, forgave you. All those other fights that you've been into, all those other times you, you went against my will, and here I am. I saved you, and you do this. That's it. You're over with. And thank God he didn't do that. And I know that there was a change within me because normally that one kick or that one knee, there would have been a lot more to come after it. But after the one knee, I realized, wait a minute, my heart broke because I realized I just messed up royally. And I asked the dude to forgive me, and I think he's glad too. <laughs> I'm glad he did it. And right then and there, a relationship was built. And 
And what I'm getting at is you enter into the gates of righteousness. And if you're not careful, you're going to see little rabbit trails and little windows. You'll jump out into unrighteousness. But there's still only one way back in through the gate of righteousness. And that one way is Jesus Christ. However we get back into that sanctuary, it is through Jesus Christ. And we can praise him for it. I'm so glad that he's forgiven me not only once but twice. Ask me how many times have I fallen short since I've been saved. Ask me. None of your business. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Because there's two types of sin. There's a sin of commission where you actually commit sin. But then there's a sin of omission where you just don't do what God's called you to do. And that sin of omission, I think that a lot of us deal with because other factors of life come up. And there's things that we know that God wants us to do, but we just maybe think that we can't do it. Or we think we have too much baggage of our past to where we're, we're not really able to get ahead of that. But I, Pastor, wants to share with you that if you have that going through your mind, I encourage you to walk in the gates of righteousness right now. Lift up your hand and praise him. I encourage you to do that because you will find that as the Lord comes and washes and cleanses and makes things new, it's as if the day itself is new. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If God has already forgiven you after you repented of your sin, why don't you go ahead, forgive yourself, and move forward? Why don't we do that? Why do we carry it with us into the next day? Why do we hold it here and say, well, I just, if God can forgive us, I believe he can give us the love and mercy to be able to forgive ourselves. How many of you think he can do that? How many of you know he does that? Yeah. And what that does is bring you back again into the gates of righteousness. I'm going to get down here. Hold on. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me. Everybody say the Lord has heard me. And listen, and art become my salvation. The idea is in every situation, the Lord becomes your salvation. The Lord becomes your salvation. The stone which the builders refused, there's a certain stone, is become the headstone of the corner. Now, once again, we're bringing into this truth about a stone, which is speaking of Christ. But you see that the builders refused. It was Israel that God gave the commandments to, that God gave his will to. And they refused the corner, the, 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 the priceless stone. They refused Jesus. They refused the very, not only the builder of the house, but the house itself. And in that refusing, praise be to God, it was in his perfect plan, we were able to accept that stone. And God becomes our salvation. The verse 23 says, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Verse 24 this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will, look at your neighbor and say, we will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to highlight that verse right there because a lot of people, when they read that, they think about, well, yeah, it's just a good day. The birds are chirping. There's nice sunshine. And I'm going to come out and just praise the Lord and have a good time. And things are going to be wonderful, no doubt about it. But God wasn't referring to all things going perfect in your life when you praise him and thank him for his goodness right then and there. The day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's talking about a certain day that happened a few hundred years into the future. And I want to bring you to that day. So I want you to turn with me. Hold your fingers there on Psalm 118. And I want you to turn with me to John 19, verse number 16.
And I want to remind you what was said here in Psalm 18, verse 22, 23, 24. The Bible says the stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. The Lord did this. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. What day are you talking about, Lord? Let me know what day you're talking about. In, in chapter 19, and starting right here in verse number 16, the Bible says, Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. Wait a minute. We're talking one day here. Now, Pastor Corey's going to feed you a little meat here. Slow down. Check this out. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. Verse number 16. And he bearing his cross, look at your neighbor and say his cross. He went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. Golgotha. I looked up that word Golgotha and, and it's two meanings. One of them was they believed the place where Jesus was crucified. When you looked at it, it, had, it looked like a skull of a person. But then I understand what was really going on here. The place, it was a place of death. And what you had around there was bones and skeletons and, and skulls that were around. How would you like to be walking up to your last moments on earth and you look and you see all these carcasses all around you? How would that make you feel? I don't think I would enjoy that too much. I don't think you would be joyous, but you must understand that this is the day that the Lord has made. And in that making that he made, listen to me, as it says right here, and he bearing his cross went forth. Everybody say went forth. Into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one, on either side, one, and Jesus in the midst of him. So two murderers, two thieves, you know, however you want to look at this, and Jesus was slap dab in the middle of them. They crucified him. Wait a minute. This is the day which the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this. God made this happen. Are you kidding me? And how does this all jive? How does this all work together? Here he is on the place of the skull. He's, he's on this mountain. There's carcasses. There's bones all around him. And here's the Lord. He's carrying his cross, but he's continuously moving forward. And in that continuously moving forward, suddenly he is placed in between two thieves. They crucified him the, and two other with him and the other uh, side one. And Jesus was slap dab in the midst of them. And I love this. You're going to see how God still had full control over this whole situation. Because here you are, a heathen governor by the name of Pilate. He wrote a title and he put on this cross, on the cross. Look what he says. In the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. I pray you get a hold of that right there. Because in that word was the very designation of who Christ is. The Jews rejected him. They said we want with no part of what he's saying. It's kind of like you ever fed a little baby. And, you know, my, my kids, they love the fruit and, you know, and like the bananas and stuff. But go ahead and feed some vegetables. And the baby. Feed some vegetables to them. And that's what the Jews did. What Jesus was giving them was hope and grace and mercy. The fulfillment of the law. But also the big picture and how God was working to save the whole world. And they were sitting there hearing it. And it was going in one ear and out the other. And they weren't receiving it at all. As they rejected Jesus Christ and put him on the cross. But as he was on the cross, in one day, when he breathed his last breath, when he says it in his finish, every sin that was ever committed, past, present, and future, was placed on that perfect sacrifice. And instantly, everything was forgiven in one moment. This is the day that the Lord has made. So we'll rejoice and be glad in it. 
I thank God for that because when it seems like we're carrying our cross, but yet still going forward, and all we see is death all around us, and all we can feel is the heartbeat, and even tears coming down the eyes, and we see the end of it all, and we wonder, God, how are you going to get the glory for this? What is going to happen? You know, we see the uncertainty in the world, the questions of, of this new presidency coming in. What's going to happen throughout the year? Listen to me. You can go ahead and set your heart at peace and not worry one iota of a second about this because I promise you God has full control over it all. He has full control even if people reject him. He is still going to get the glory. He's still going to bring salvation to those who will accept it. He is that salvation. He says in verse number 20, check this out. This title then was read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jew to Pilate, write not, and the Jews are starting to try to dictate what this pagan governor is going to write and put on Jesus' cross. He said, he said, don't write, don't write the king of the Jews, but that he said, he said, I am the king of the Jews. And I love this, Brother Trey, because even if the Pilate would have went ahead and been, been okay, all right, all right, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and I'll change that. To, he said, I am the king of the Jews. It still would have been perfectly right. Because he said, I am. And I am the king of the Jews. It still would have been perfect. God still wouldn't have lost control whatsoever. Turn me down a little bit, please, Brother Trey. I want you to go back with me to Psalm 118. <clears throat> Praise the Lord of glory. And I want to read verse 22, 23, and 24 to you one more time. And I want to see if it just gels with you. If you could see this in this light now. The stone which the builders refuse, the certain stone they said they want no part of is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Because of that day, and because of what happened on Mount Golgotha over 2,000 years ago, we can surely rejoice and know that our sins are forgiven. Once we've repented, given our life to him. And our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise be to the Lord. Verse 25 says, Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. You know what prosperity means? To push, to push forward. Lord, I need some strength. Lord, help me to step forward. Look at your neighbor and say, take a step forward. Push. Push. Sister Virginia Nobles, it's interesting. She used to be my Sunday school teacher. And as my Sunday school teacher, she was only of like, what was she, four foot six? She's a little girl, a little lady. It's a little girl. She's old enough to be my grandma twice. <laughs> and boy, she'll get the preaching. That little hand will come up and says, all you got to do is push, push. And then she would say, you got to pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. P-U-S-H. Push. And that's the prayer. God, you've got to move or you've got to move me. Something's got to move. Praise be to God. Push. Push. Praise the Lord. I want you to write that down. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. <clears throat> Pray until something happens. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. <laughs> well, praise be to God. We didn't cuss them out of the house of the Lord. We blessed them out. Can you say amen? 
We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. We blessed you out of the house of the Lord to come in and praise him and bless him and honor him. God is the Lord. You must understand. I want you to write this down. In these four words, you're going to see that we worship God Almighty, but there is none other that even comes close to who he is. The word God is dealing with the Almighty. Look at your neighbor and say the Almighty. Now, the, now you must understand there can only be one Almighty. There's not like four or five, oh, he's Almighty. No, he, no, no, no. And there is one Almighty, the Almighty, the Almighty. And that's God is the Lord. That means the existing one, the only one. Whoever was before time was, he was. When time is uh, is gone, he still will be. He is the almighty existing one which has shown his light. And that light, once again, that enlightened our heart and showed us the mercy and truth of Christ. Bind the sacrifices with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. I don't have time to teach that. Verse 28. Thou art my God, my almighty God, and I will praise thee. Thee, I will give you thanks. But also in that praising, there's a confession. There's a confession. There's a praise of God, but there's also a confessing of where we are, especially what we're dealing with internally. You know, there's a time where we have to give all of our insecurities, all of our worries. We have to give all of our faults unto him in that capacity. We, we praise him. We confess that we are nothing without him. We confess that we need him. We confess where we fall short. Lord, help me to please watch my tongue. Lord, please don't let me get aggravated. Lord, help me to push forward because I'm feeling tired. You're confessing, Lord. I'm praising you and I'm thanking you, but I'm asking you to give me clarity of mind when I'm walking through the day because there is so much fog out there. I'm asking you, Lord, to do that. Help me to remain true. Help me to hear your voice. Lord, keep my mouth from sinning. That's praising him. That's the full gospel. That's not partial. Oh, everything is good. Praise the Lord. Everything is great. But within, you're falling apart. Within, you're having struggles. Within, dead men bones is what the Lord called the Pharisees. You know, if you've, you've been in church and been around church for a while, you're going to know that there's a certain mask that people put on. We call it the church face. And you know the church face is when you're driving down the road and you know you, you, you've, <laughs> you've dealt with some things. I'm going to give you an example because Bridget's is right here with me. <laughs> yeah. Justice Isaiah, I'm going to go ahead and tell on him. Justice Isaiah is a wonderful singer. Yeah, he is. Yeah, a wonderful singer. And, and uh, and you've seen how, you know, mom was like, you want to help me sing? No, I don't want to help me sing. And just dealt with that, you know, back and forth. And, and, and there's times where it's like, oh, boy, come on. And you come in, there's, you know, you're going through things of life, and then you're walking up. And I've seen people as I've been out here towards the parking lot. I've seen them, and I'll get back to her. And see them come in, and they're driving in their vehicle. And you see them, and, boy, it looked like they just drank a bottle of lemon juice. <laughs> Her face is in the yeah. They're riding on the yeah, girl, yeah, 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 beep, beep, yeah. They come walking in, but I'll tell you what, right when they get to that door, suddenly a smile comes across their face. They're like, Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the face, we call it the church face. <laughs> Because there's times where, especially when you're in the ministry, you just got to suck it up and put a smile on your face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and be real. And even though inside you're like, man, we're going to twist these boys' ears off. <laughs> <laughs> but yet, 
by putting on that face, you understand that, hey, God sees everything beyond that. And when you come up to his courts with praise and thanksgiving, you might be coming up with, oh, Lord, praise you and thank you. But you're just putting the church face on. Inside, you've got temptation, questions. The battle's real. The victory's there, but Lord have mercy. You've got to help me through this portion of the day. And that is that confession that comes forth. And as you can see, Sister Bridget, she jumped up there like a trooper and sang, can you say amen? amen. Just as I today is not playing video games for a while. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> but, in just being totally transparent, transparent, everybody goes through. Everybody faces it. And it's okay. It's all right. But there's times where you gotta put the church face on. Because God's gonna use you. There's times where you gotta just say, and I know this because Brother F. T. Mason, oh, in his 80s, one of the main reasons why I'm even a Pentecostal pastor. Is I used to ask him. Brother Mason, how you doing? And Sister Kelly, tell me two words. I'm blessed. Now, I'm blessed because I just came back from the cardiologist and I'm still alive, but I got problems. I'm blessed even though my body, I'm in my 80s and my, my feet are hurting, my ankles hurting. I'm dealing with so many things, so many different elements, but yet I've talked to Brother Mason. I ask him and I say I'm blessed. They say I'm blessed. Say, is he lying? No, he's not. The reason why he's not, because when you really think about it, how blessed you truly are, you would pull back the reins a little bit and go ahead and knock off the mother drugs and say, God, I thank you for what you are doing. I thank you for what you're putting me through. The devil's going to think you've lost your mind when you thank the Lord for putting you through this right now. Because that confession is coming through. The tears are coming down. And strength is entering your body. Hope is entering your body. Jesus is forming you. God is forming you. Has anybody ever dealt with clay when they're a kid? They sit there and mess with a little mud. What happens if you find like a little rock or something? What do you got to do? You got to get it out of there. You know, sit there and uh, make mud pies. And, and when God puts us on that potter's wheel and he starts to smoothen us out, and suddenly we come along the backside there, it's like, whoa, what is that? Wait, boy, I want you to see that right there. I see that. And it's painful at times when he starts dealing with it. But thank God he does. Because I'm in his hands. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he puts enough pressure. Just enough. To go ahead and pull that little rock out. Smooth it out. Because he's making me a vessel of honor. Making me a vessel of honor. I thank God for that. Because this is the day which the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thou art my God, I will extol thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Look at your neighbor and say, his mercy endureth forever. How long is forever? Give me an example. How long is forever? Eternity. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. What does mercy mean? Give me an answer. What's mercy? What's the definition, Brother Trey? Giving, getting something that you do not deserve. 
Right. What's grace? No. Grace is grace is, is not receiving something you do. Deserve. The other way around. Oh, of course, sorry. yeah, it's the other way around. Grace is unmerited favor is receiving for forgiveness. Something we don't deserve. That's his grace. And mercy is we don't get what we deserve. Because if God was truly with us like we deserve, <laughs> and if he would have fulfilled it to the point where, okay, the wages of sin is dead, and I'm never going to give you an opportunity to make things right with me, oh boy. One moment in hell, one second, one millisecond in hell will make you regret every single time you rejected God's faithfulness. Do you think about that? But because of who Christ is, and this is one portion of Scripture, we're going to go ahead and we're going to close off on this. As we deal, his mercy endureth. That means his goodness, his kindness, his faithfulness, it lasts, it endures, it endures forever. But in verse 28, along with your homework, okay, 1 Peter 2, 1 through 25, in verse 28, I want you to, Read this, but I also want God to reveal to you what's he trying to tell you. Because I'm going to share with you what he dealt with me on as, as it says here, thou art my God. He's making it personal. My God. He says, thou art my God, my almighty God. I will praise thee. Once again, there's a giving of thanks and a confessing. But thou art my God, I will also exalt thee, which means I will lift you up. In this portion of scripture where it says, I will exalt thee, I will lift you up. I kind of wondered what that meant. Because it was like, okay, God, I'm praising you, I'm lifting you up. You, you, you are above every imagination, every high thing and every thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's, that's what he puts under submission. But God, we lift you up. We extol thee. We lift you up. And in that lifting up, this is something you must understand. When the scripture says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. In that place, in that heavenly place, there's times where we lift up God. We praise him. We thank him. We know he's above every situation, every imagination, every what if. We know he's above that. And what I love about this, as we have our hands in the air, our hearts are praising him, our hearts are in the air, our praise, our voice, the very breath that he's giving us is in the air. Suddenly something changes in the atmosphere of your life. And what he does is he picks you up above it. Because where I am, there you will be also. But also he says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. So slap dab in the midst of your hell on earth as you lift him up, you praise him, you, you, you confess, God, this is where I'm at. Your heart's lifted up above the noise. Suddenly the spirit of God grabs your spirit and he lifts you up. He brings you unto himself. I love that. There's times where the pressures and the demand of life are coming in. There's times where, and, and this is what pastor does. This is part of the ministry, is me getting you ready for what's out there. You've got to remember this. This is what I do. I get you ready for what's out there. Because it's real. It's real. There's The, the devil doesn't care what your name is, he just wants your soul, he wants your life, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He doesn't care of the aftermath of it. He wants you dead. But God steps in and says, not now. This one is mine. And we must hold on to that. Because when temptation is real, and it is real, you must remember, no, I am his, he is mine. And you're able to stand against that temptation. And in that standing, there's a lifting up. And in that lifting up, there's an escape. Suddenly, as the word said, he becomes your salvation. 
He lifts you up above it. And you know, he says there's a grain of mustard seed that can remove the mountain. But there's times where God keeps the mountain there, but he'll lift you up over that mountain. There's times where you got to grab a pickaxe and start picking at it. <laughs> but there's times where he'll pick you up over it. He'll place you on the other side. And the benefit of that is when you're facing it, he's picking you up. And putting you over. There's families right now. They're dealing with such emptiness. Such loss. Such hurt. That the only way they're going to get through this. Is they're going to have to extol God Almighty. They're going to have to lift him up. And God's going to have his way. Let's stand. Everybody in this house. Will we go ahead and do that for a moment? Will you lift up your hands dear Father. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we know that your mercy endureth forever.